For this video, I'll be working through the Level 2 2017 Waves exam, question 3. Question 3. During her summer break, Sarah goes to her holiday home by the beach. Due to the rocks at the beach and the, uh, the depth of the water changes sharply. At the beach, Sarah counts three waves reaching the boundary in 15 seconds. The wavelength of the water is 18 metres. Calculate the speed of the waves in deep water. So this is um, a pretty simple application of V equals F lambda. The only tricky part is what is the frequency? So the, the way to write frequency, it's the number of cycles or repetitions or whatever per second. ND. So cycles per second, in other words, it's how many repetitions per time? So we've got three repetitions, three waves, three cycles, divided by the time, which is 15 seconds. Um, right here. And that is one-fifth of a hertz. That's the way to remember it. Period is the opposite. Period is how long, how many seconds it takes to do a cycle. And that's why F is equal to 1 over T, or T is equal to 1 over F. Um, so now we have one-fifths. We have the wavelength, that's 18 metres, just there's the wavelength. So we have V is equal to one-fifth times 18, which is equal to 3.6 uh, metres per second minus 1. Right, next question. On the diagram below, draw the refracted... Oh, um, Waves move from deep water to shallow water. On the diagram below, draw the refracted waves in shallow water. Um, this is a bit of a tricky one. If you didn't already know that waves travel slower in shallow water, now you do. Um, but you could sort of, if you got the first question, um, you know 3.6 metres, and I've told you here, if the wave speed is 3 metres per second, calculate the wavelength. So we know it's going to slow down. Um, it's not slowing down by a significant amount, which means the wave is going to be behind what would have it had been originally. So get your trusty ruler. This wave here is slower than that, so it's not going to travel the same amount of distance, so it's going to be behind. So they all bend, keeping the angle exactly the same, using your ruler. Because um, I haven't told you how much it's bent by, you can just sort of do it not by bending heaps. Um, the answer schedule says it bent probably more than this, but whatever. Um, uh, that's probably not the best diagram. But I'll put a wee thing here to show that the lambda, these are all equal. Lambda, just because I'm artistically challenged. There we go, I'll chuck another lambda up here as well. They're meant to all be the same. Lambda. Right, if the wave speed in the shallow water is 3 metres per second, calculate it. Calculate the refracted waves, the wavelength of the refracted waves in the shallow water. So in your formula sheet, you'll have V1 over V2 is equal to lambda 1 over lambda 2, which is also equal to N2 over N1, if I remember rightly. So we have V1 is equal to 3.6 metres per second. We calculated it in the first question. That would have really stuffed you if you didn't get the first question. Um, Lambda 1, they told you, is 18 metres. Lambda 2 is equal to question mark. I don't have a clue what that is. That's what I'm trying to find. And V2 is equal to 3 metres per second up here because that's it right there. So all we need to do is find lambda 2. So how are we going to do that? Well, what are we going to do? We shall flip this fraction. So we're going to have V2 over V1, lambda 2 over lambda 1. V2 over V1, um, lambda 2 is equal to, it would have been divided by lambda 1, but I'm going to move this lambda 1 over here. I'm going to times both sides by lambda 1. Easy peasy lemon squeezy, so it's going to be equal to lambda 1, 18 times V2, 3.0 over 3.6, which is equal to 15 metres. Cool. Next question. That over. One day, Sarah is walking along a cliff beside the beach. She cannot see the water waves reaching the rocky shore, but she can hear them hitting the rocky shore. Explain why Sarah cannot see the water waves reaching the rocky shore, but she can hear them. Right, I'm going to pause the video right now and go through it. So, I have said sound waves have far greater wavelength compared to light. Um, compared to light waves, so can diffract and propagate up and around the cliff to Sarah. 
I put it like a little bit of a caveat. Um, longer wavelengths diffract more than shorter wavelengths. So that's pretty much true. Light is on the so like red light, R E D. The uh, red lambda is what is it? Six thirty two times ten to the negative nine meters. Your average sound wave, if I remember rightly, um, is in the order of about a regular sound. Trying to think, about 500 hertz is roughly about half a meter. This is just off the top of my head. So that is absolutely tiny compared to that. That's why this doesn't diffract ordinarily unless you get very, very small slits um, compared to sound. Sound diffracts very, very easily. Um, right. Next question. Further down the beach, a band was preparing to play music. They had set up two speakers, which were four metres apart. As part of their sound test, they were playing a sound of constant frequency through the speakers. Sarah walks along a straight line from A to B, as shown below. There's from A to B. Sarah notices that the sound she hears varies from quiet to very loud many times as she walks from A to B. Explain in detail why Sarah hears louder and quiet to sounds many times as she walks from A to B. So I'm going to pause the video, write the answer, and we'll go through it. So first and foremost, what I did is I flipped my sheet upside down and I drew the waves propagating out. So I drew my waves propagating out from both speakers and then I drew a line directly bet between them. It's, you know, I'm not the best artist, but it's meant to be this is the antinodal line. So that's a line where all the waves, you'll see that wave crest right there combines, wave crest right there combines. This should have been shifted in a bit, this should have been shifted in a bit, but that's because I'm not the greatest artist. You probably should use a um, compass with a pencil. That's probably a good idea. Um, so you'll have your antinodal line, another antinodal line, I've joined that crest there. There's another crest that would have joined and there probably would have been another line that ran through like that. It would have joined, oh that's terrible. Um, but these are the antinodal lines. We have our antinodal, 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 and directly between them will be the nodal line. So I've obviously drawn them upside down because I drew them down here. So I've got antinode in the middle, and then I've got a node, then another antinode, then a node, then an antinode, node, antinode, node, antinode. This is just to help you visualize what's going on. So I have said, when Sarah walks from A to B, she walks through nodal and antinodal, oh, I'll cross that out, I should have said lines. Well, I suppose that points. Um, a nodal point is when destructive interference occurs when the path difference from Sarah to each speaker is half a wavelength. I've used Lando because it's shorter than running whole wavelength. She will hear the sound quieter than usual. She'll still hear the, hear the sound because it bounces off the ground and all sorts. There's no way you can ever black out the sound. Also, the amplitude at this point is less. It's inferred because it's quieter than usual. Um, an antinodal point is when constructive interference occurs due to the path difference from Sarah to each speaker is one whole wavelength. I probably should have worded it differently, but whatever, you get the point. One whole wavelength, that means that in phase, so this is where the waves arrive in phase, superimposed to create a larger amplitude, so greater volume is heard. If you memorise, I suppose you don't try and memorise this, but they ask this question every year in exams and it's the same answer. So 